Meredith Urquidge and Ryan Barks. I do have to make a confession because that story about the crab pot scared me a bit. Um, you know, I love Dungeness crabs and I remember doing meetings in the early days of Lightwave in San Francisco and going to San Francisco Pier and having Dungeness crab. And I had no idea uh, that there were people feeding spam to Dungeness crab. My whole image of Dun Dungeness crab is changed now. I won't look at them the same way. So that was a very scary story, but I know I'm gonna get over it. Um, well, I think first, I would like to take this opportunity to uh, thank all of you, especially all of you that won the trip to the cruise. Uh, without all of you, none of this is possible. So please give yourselves a round of applause for an amazing job of you. So 20 years. Uh, I know that uh, most of you have been looking for Christina and I the past couple of days. And uh, I, truth be told, I've needed a day, uh, August 13th, which is the day that LifeWave, the network marketing company started, to take some time off and really think about the enormity of what it means that we've been in business this long, uh, where we are today and where we're going. We have a jet that's flying in. I'm confused about what that noise is. <laughs> we're okay, right? I know we're on a ship. Uh, no alarm bells, I guess we're okay. Um, but I, I really needed to take a little bit of time uh, because uh, I'd say the first thing is I feel an enormous sense of gratitude for the job that all of you have done over these past 20 years to allow us to be in this position of being the fastest growing network marketing company in the world, to have made it to be one of the biggest networking companies in the world, and also what it means for our future and where it is that we're going. And uh, the ambitions of the company have changed now quite a bit. When I started the business, uh, actually back in 2002, and I want to share some of these stories with you so you can have some context for this. Um, the, the mission was very simple. We wanted to uh, go to market with this new technology and help people have more energy without having to rely on stimulants like caffeine. So that was a very, very simple mission. And then a few years later, it wasn't very long, uh, about 2005, I invented the glutathione patch. And that was really a landmark event for the company because now an entire array of uh, products opened and now the, the future of what it is that we could create and what we could do expanded dramatically. And then of course we had X39 after 10 years of stem cell research in 2018. So the mission, the vision of the company has organically changed and grown uh, over these past 20 years and I think it's really important for all of you to know that what I see for the future is uh, something truly remarkable that we can create together. And the first of that is we can create a network marketing company that's never existed before. And we've laid a foundation now to make that possible. And in the process, we can take new technologies to market that you haven't seen yet, but they do exist in the lab. And if Ryan tells you what they are, then he's out of a job. So. <laughs> but I know he won't. Um, but we have the opportunity to take these new technologies to market and in the process, do good for the planet 
and do good for humanity. And ultimately, that's what this really should be all about. So that's what's coming in the future, but I'm gonna share a little bit more of that with you later and give you some specifics. But uh, first I wanna reflect back on uh, where we've been these past 20 years and share some stories that I hope that you'll find inspirational. Uh, because the, the really the point is, it's difficult to talk about this without making me seem like a good guy or something. And uh, I really don't wanna do that. Uh, kind of the whole point of this is that we find ourselves in situations in life that are difficult. We all find that we can get into uh, some very dark times. Maybe it's a challenge with our health or challenge with finances or with family. And uh, LifeWave was able to survive through a number of extraordinarily difficult times. And it was through a lot of prayer, a lot of hard work, a lot of blessings that we were able to get to where we are today. So you could even say that it was really the first 15 years that was laying a foundation for the business. How many people think of being in a startup for 15 years before you can say, okay, now we're really gonna take off, right? But that's almost the way that it was with LifeWave. So sometimes, you know, we, you can have plans uh, and those are, it's great to do planning, but then very often you'll find that God has different plans for you. So you have to be able to adapt to that. So, uh, and you all enjoy Athens, by the way. <laughs> enjoy Athens. Christina and I, we went to see the Acropolis. And uh, because the Acropolis is known for myths, I'm gonna tell you a myth now. <laughs> Okay, so that means this is a story that it didn't actually happen, but I want to just convey a meaning behind it. So, Christina and I, don't be embarrassed, honey. It's all good. Trust the process. That's what we say in our relationship. Trust the process. Um, so we went up to the Acropolis. I had wanted to see this my entire life. Of course, it's absolutely beautiful. See this beautiful hill, all these ancient buildings up there. You know, you want to find out what happened. So we, we took the hike. Uh, and we went up the side of the hill to see this, and there's a tour guide up at the top. Here's where the myth starts. We actually did go to the Acropolis. Um, we get to the top and there's a tour guide. And the tour guide says, take a look at this hill. It's been here for millions of millions of years. And a few million years ago, a bolt of lightning came down from the sky, and the locals said that it was the god Zeus. Bolt of lightning comes down from the sky, it strikes the ground, and all of a sudden, over a process of millions of years, these buildings start to just rise up out of the ground, and that's how we got these beautiful buildings that are here today. Now right away, we know there is no way this story could be true. Right? We can look at a building like the Parthenon, it's built with sacred geometry, as you probably know, and we can marvel at how did people thousands of years ago cut blocks to such precision? How did they move these blocks that weigh thousands of pounds up on top of one another without doing that with any modern equipment? But we can look at the Acropolis and we can know that there was engineering, we can know that there was intelligent design and that people created it. So why is it that when we have uh, three billion base pairs in our DNA stretched across 23 chromosomes, that there's literally trillions of pieces of data in the biological system on this planet to create all of the different species and life forms across our planet that people want to tell us that this sprang from nothing. Why would we ever want to believe that? There has to be a creator involved. There has to be a mind and an energy for this intelligent design. Uh, back in uh, the 80s when I was in high school, uh, I was a good science student 
and uh, I love programming computers. And I was so good at computers that my guidance counselor talked me out of going for a degree in biology to get a degree in computer science, which two years into the process I realized was a gigantic mistake. But I used to love programming computers. And as many of you know who have programmed computers, that you have thousands or, you know, today it's billions of lines of code and of course AI systems are writing their own code. But what you know about programming is that if you have one line of code that is incorrect, that software program could crash. And it causes uh, sometimes unsurvivable problems for computer systems. So we know that there had to be intelligent design involved with the programming of our DNA. It's absolutely too complex. There's actually micro-machinery, molecular motors in our mitochondria. Did you know that there is a little motor that spins at about 9,000 RPM in our mitochondria? It's powered by hydrogen. It's completely clean burning, completely efficient. And uh, by understanding how this works, we can actually optimize our mitochondria and stay younger longer. That's why we should be interested in it. But in order to create these molecular engines, it takes, uh, which is built off of proteins, there had to be programming involved to synthesize these proteins. So what came first then? How could, what did the protein do before it became part of this engine? Doesn't seem to be an obvious answer to that unless you uh, look at it from the perspective of this was all created with this end design in mind. And why are we talking about this? Because LifeWave is essentially based off of biological codes. What our patches do is use the same system that our body is using to communicate with its environment. If we look at the human body, we can break it down in very simple terms that the body is going to make or use energy and the body will be communicating. It communicates within the cell and it communicates, the cells communicate with their environment. And that system starts with light. The light emerges from the DNA and it emerges from the hydrogen bonds that hold the DNA together. And those hydrogen bonds are uh, two protons that counter-rotate. And the reason why that's important is because in between those hydrogen bonds is nothing, yet light emerges from it. So where does it come from? These photons of light are highly coherent. They're as coherent as laser light. And they will initiate thousands and thousands of different chemical reactions in the body. So the light acts as a signaling mechanism that turns into biochemistry. And it can also turn into electrical signaling, which eventually turns into being manifested as a biochemical change in our bodies. So when we're building a business off of this uh, foundational technology, what that means is that the applications for this are near limitless in the sense that if we don't have to rely on drugs, we don't have to rely on supplements, we'll work in harmony with nature. That means we can, to elevate glutathione or elevate copper peptides, simply know what the biological light code is for that peptide. And then we can initiate it with our patch technology. So this is why we say, even though we're 20 years in, we're just getting started. Yeah. There's so much more to come. I didn't have the salmon this morning, but I, I am getting a little dehydrated, so I'm gonna take a break in a moment and get some water. Um, okay. Now, you're gonna drink from this, right?
I don't want to be like the brother of Mike, but I just I don't want to be swapped and spit with you. That's for you and your wife. Okay. Honey, watch that. Don't let Mike get you. Okay. So, um, so that's one of the reasons to be excited about the future. We have more, you know. Uh, I, many of you think we're launching a product in October, right? I said many of you think we're launching a product in October, right? Okay. Uh, we're not launching a product in October. We're launching a technology in October. <laughs> And um, this is going to be in complete harmony uh, with what we're doing with the patches, but it's going to form a foundation. What you'll see is that this new technology, uh, which myself and uh, my team at our research lab in Orlando, we've been working on for many years to uh, take something that was a concept and bring it into uh, what eventually could be embodied in a product. But the technology is as foundational as what we have with the patches. It works in complete synergy with the patches, yet what you'll see is that there is uh, an enormous future in front of us with this, where any one of these uh, products that are created um, off of this technology, we could start a separate network marketing business with if we wanted to, which we won't. This will all, of course, be exclusive to Lightwave. Um, it's already patented, by the way. So this will be, um, what you'll see with this new technology is that we've done the research, we've done the studies, you're gonna get to see new studies you haven't seen before. Uh, you'll get to see that we've patented this. It's completely exclusive to LightWave, and uh, it's life-changing. And it, it will give you an indication of the direction that we're going to be going in now over the next five to seven years as we continue to uh, build the business. So uh, we're really excited about this and the implications that this has and, and what we're going to be bringing. Um, so first, a little bit about the past. A little bit of uh, trivia, maybe, in case this comes up at a LifeWave event in the future. I bet many of you don't know that David Jumper made the first LifeWave video. So, I want to put some context behind this. So, it's the 1990s, and I have a company with uh, five other guys, and these are some brilliant people. One of my business partners built the ground support equipment for Star Wars missile defense. Another one of my business partners designed the supercapacitors at Sandia National Labs that were connected to the particle accelerator. So I had this enormous blessing of, of working with these uh, brilliant people. Another uh, fellow that joined later uh, had worked on a project called Brilliant Pebbles, uh, which was a kinetic energy weapon, a uh, satellite-based system for shooting down uh, ICBMs. And uh, he joined the team because he was uh, designing the combustion chamber for the uh, turbine system that we invented uh, to provide emergency power uh, for these submarines. So I'm going into meetings and I'm doing meetings at uh, General Dynamics, um, Electric Boat, Newport New Shipbuilding, Raytheon, these kind of companies, Detroit Edison, General Electric. We're doing these meetings, and there are extraordinarily bright people. You know, these, one of the fellows was the top physicist uh, in the United States who was at uh, GE at the time. Uh, I did a meeting with him. Uh, there was a meeting that we did with the top nuclear engineer at uh, Newport New Shipbuilding, really, really interesting guy. So I've been doing these meetings, preparing these very, very technical PowerPoints, showing demonstrations of the uh, equipment that we had designed and built, and that was a really exciting time in my life. But then 9-11 happens, and 
because we're designing emergency systems to keep people alive, we're not designing weapons, the people that I would talk to every day were no longer there. There was like a iron gate came down and you could no longer communicate with people unless you were designing weapons. So uh, I had a family to support and needed to think about, okay, it's been six months, eight months, nine months, and uh, all of the uh, contracts that we had on these technologies were frozen. So what am I gonna do? So I, I started talking to people about this patch thing that I had invented originally for the crew of a mini sub, which were SEALs. And I thought, okay, I spent a few years coming up with this idea, inventing it and uh, getting prototypes. Uh, maybe I could build a business off of this. So I'll start talking to some business friends and then see where this goes. So a period of time goes by and um, the network marketing company, after two years, the network marketing company gets set up on August 13th of 2004 and we had patches on U.S. Olympic swimmers, uh, thankfully because of Coach Richard Quick. Amazing, as David Jumper said, amazing, amazing guy. And uh, end of July, beginning of August, uh, I had a thousand people contact me that were interested in distributing the patches because we had made national headlines from people seeing the patches on Olympic athletes. And the network was born. So David was one of the first networkers that I started to talk to and uh, someone who couldn't be here today, Chuck Michael. And we launched the company on November 10th. So we had this momentum from making national headlines. And uh, David and Chuck were saying, look, you know, we've got this momentum, we've got all these people that wanna come in, we've gotta put up a website, put a back office in place. So you can imagine how much work had to be done between the middle of August and November 10th in order for us to launch as a company. And we did $500,000 in business that very first month, going from almost nothing. Uh, but here, here was the funny part. So we had our website and uh, David, who I had only spoken to by phone, I hadn't met him in person yet. He said, okay, I've created a video for the company. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm coming from uh, an industry where I'm meeting with nuclear engineers and brilliant scientists. I was working at facilities where there's nuclear subs. And so I had this fellow that I haven't met yet and he said, okay, I've created a video for your company. I'm thinking, what kind of business am I in? <laughs> He's a distributor, why is he making a corporate video? I don't get it. Uh, and he sent it to me and I was sitting in my home office uh, at the time and it was absolutely brilliant. I, I mean, it literally, it, it brought a tear to my eye. I thought, this, this is absolutely incredible. So of course, you know, I thanked him for doing it. It was a huge hit and it helped get us to uh, get the company to start. Thank you. I want to mention also the uh, two other leaders uh, that were up here. Jan Vigel. Uh, so when we started, we were confining our launch to uh, the US. It was all about, at that point, trying to build infrastructure, uh, hire people in customer service and order fulfillment. And uh, given that I was outside the industry, I will tell you, I made every mistake that you could make as an executive in a network marketing company. Um, but somehow we survived, we got momentum, and had a, a phenomenal uh, first year. But uh, as networkers will do, uh, many networkers weren't satisfied with containing the launch to the US, and uh, we would be on leadership calls, and networkers would say, well, why don't we open in Australia? Why don't we open in Europe and Japan? And uh, you know, I don't know what to say. Yeah, sure, that sounds great. Why not open in Japan? How do you do that? Um, and uh, but I remember being in uh, 
in Germany, and I had dinner with uh, Jan Beagle. And, you know, like, you meet many people across time in this business who say, well, I'm gonna be one of your top leaders, I'm gonna build the business, I'm really excited about this. And then we know very often some of those people come and go. And uh, Jan, I wanna thank you for always being there for LifeWave and being just such a wonderful example. Of thank you. And then the other gentleman that was up here was Brother Roy Sir Jones. Now, Roy and I have had, I, I have been in more countries with Roy than any other uh, leader or brand partner in the company. Uh, Roy has that distinction. And uh, the two of us, as he said, have, we've been on stage together in Mexico, countries in Europe, uh, all throughout Asia. We've done meetings in the Philippines, Australia, Indonesia, Japan. I mean, you kind of name it, and Roy and I were there patching people. And we had just some incredible experiences you know, things that if our uh, VP of legal were here, he wouldn't want me to say. Um, I know Roy would say them, uh, and they would, all, they would all be true. But really, uh, witnessing, the two of us had the opportunity to uh, really witness a number of miracles that occurred when we applied patches to people. We had an experience where we were in uh, a hospital in the Philippines, and we were meeting with the head of the hospital. And this gentleman, uh, he was their head of surgery. He came up on stage to introduce me, and he had been a basketball player. And uh, he had two bad knees, so he had, um, he had two uh, crutches that he was coming up on stage with. And it was, it was a meeting with about 200 doctors and nurses, and before I started my uh, presentation, I thought, I'm, I'm gonna patch him, uh, which I did. And uh, he put the crutches down, he started walking away, he said, this is unbelievable, I'm out of pain. And he jumped off the stage. Mm -hmm. um, and so then, that caused a chain reaction. Um, then there was the head of anesthesia said, oh, I've gotta try this. And so before we ever got to telling people what the patches were, we had a line of people that wanted to try them. Uh, one, one other memory that I will never forget with uh, Roy was that uh, we were doing a meeting in, uh, in Indonesia together. We were touring the country. And the first thing uh, to know about Roy is that he's incredibly passionate about his spirituality, about his Christian faith, and uh, he wants to share that as much as he does the patches. And um, we were supposed to do a meeting in the south of Indonesia, and the volcano erupted. And uh, so we couldn't get a flight in. And I thought, okay, we'll, let's see, if we, maybe we can do another meeting up in the northern part of Indonesia. And uh, Roy said to me, Chief, Come on, let's go. We'll go down over to the south of Indonesia. Don't worry about the volcano. Put on the armor of God. Everything is going to be fine. <laughs> and I had to remind him that you know, armor of God is a spiritual term to defend against evil, not a raging, exploding volcano. Right? Those are two different things. We also have to exercise some common sense as Christians. Um, but I, I had to admire the faith. Uh, and uh, we ended up uh, renting a car and a jeep and going through, crossing through the jungles of Indonesia with monkeys swimming, swinging through the trees, uh, getting to our next destination. So Roy, thank you for that wonderful memory and thank you for being a true boy. So 2006 comes along, we're doing really well and um, October of that year, a uh, person was signing up in France and signing up positions using stolen credit cards. 
and they racked up about a million dollars in sales uh, before we detected it, and our system came crashing down. And we had to issue refunds uh, to people, but we had already paid money on commissions, we'd already shipped product, we couldn't get any of that stuff back. And uh, by that Christmas, we were looking at going out of business. And the only way we made payroll for Christmas was because I took, and I, I don't want to edify myself here, so I have to be careful. Uh, I had to take all the money that I had in savings to uh, pay payroll. Uh, and the reason why I'm sharing this with you is because um, I went uh, 16 months without taking a salary because times were really tough. I lived off of credit cards. And the reason I'm sharing this is because my life and livelihood and it is completely tied into this company. It is, it is absurd uh, for me to take any other path in my life. My life is LifeWave. <laughs> Seven. It was an incredibly difficult year uh, for the business through a lot of hard work, a lot of patience and persistence, uh, leaders like David and Roy stepping up, continuing to do meetings, continuing to bring people in, that we got through those really difficult times. And when we got to uh, January of 2008, we had leaders that signed up in Europe and started to build those markets. And uh, for three years in a row, our, our sales were doubling year over year. And uh, LifeWave had made a comeback. So the reason to share this with you is that we're all going to find very difficult, uh, dark times in our life. We can face health challenges. We can have you know very serious financial challenges, uh, but I would encourage you to turn to God, to pray daily, to be thankful and grateful for everything that you have in your life, and then get down to work, set your objectives, set your goals, do the basics, do the things that we know work, scheduling meetings, following up on emails, giving presentations, giving demonstrations, the basics always work, and it's through that hard work, patience, persistence, faith, gratitude, that we can survive and then later thrive. It's so, so important. So we had our uh, second time that we, LifeWave as a company almost died on the operating table. And that was about 10 years after that, almost exactly to the, the week. It was um, the first week in October of 2016. So literally 10 years later, we launch a new product, we launch a new computer system, and once the system was turned live, everything crashed and we couldn't take orders. And this went on for weeks. And the system was down basically between October and December. And even after that, it took months to really fix it and correct it. And I'm so grateful actually, that those events happened in 2006 and 2016, because if they hadn't, uh, then we couldn't have prevented them in the future. Now we have systems around all of these things so they won't happen again. Uh, but unfortunately, we had to learn a really difficult lesson. So this crisis happens in 2016 and 2017, incredibly difficult year. So I'm going into meetings with staff and you can feel the friction in the air. It was not fun in those days to be in those meetings. We had to go through layoffs. We had to let, had to let a lot of people go in order to uh, save the business 
so that we could fight and live. And that was just so very difficult. At that time, we had already been close to 10 years of research into stem cells. And as you know, eventually this would turn into over 70 patents. And the main technology that I was focusing on was pulsed electromagnetic field therapy. So I thought this was going to be uh, something that we would come out with, but it was a, this enormous, expensive, time-consuming regulatory process. Uh, this may still be something we do in the future now that the circumstances have changed, uh, because it's still uh, an incredible technology. Uh, but back then, it seemed like an impossibility to uh, take that tech to market and do it properly. So one day I'm in a meeting, and there was a disagreement uh, between two of the executives. It got very heated, and everyone was really feeling this tension and pressure. And I thought, I've got to uh, do something to turn this around and get people excited about the company again. I am so tired of playing defense. I want to be on offense. I want to have a new product, have it be something exciting. How can I take all of this, um, all of this research that we've done and turn it into a product that we can make uh, available to everyone and do it cost effectively, do it inexpensively, have it be safe and efficacious. How is that going to happen? So uh, as many of you know, I'm a huge Iron Man fan and uh, Tony Stark's story is that he gets down to his lowest point, he goes into a cave, he's forced to create his Iron Man armor, and then he emerges from the cave victorious, and that opens up a new chapter in his life. So for me, it was going into the lab, and looking through years of notes, and thinking, how is this gonna happen? And uh, the good Lord blessed me with a flash of insight. So for those of you that are inventors, many times what happens is you'll work, you'll get a, a kernel of an idea, you'll work on a project, you'll put a lot of time into it, and then eventually something comes from it. And then every once in a while, an inventor experiences something uh, truly remarkable, and it's precious, and that's a flash of insight, where the idea just comes into your brain, and you can very, very clearly see the path forward and uh, that's what happened. As soon as I was given this um, information, that, that's exactly what I saw. This is going to be the path forward. Um, so I got to work creating the X39 patch. And then uh, as that product was developed, it was the middle of June of 2018. And we were gearing up to make these patches and, uh, and share them with the leaders in our community at the time. And I had no idea whether or not the leaders would like this idea. We had a conference call with the leaders, middle of June, 2018. Will they really like this idea about activating stem cells with a patch? I don't know, but that try, right? Um, and of course, the rest, as they say, is history. It was an incredibly exhilarating, uh, exhilarating thing to be a part of. And I'm, I'm so very grateful to all of the leaders that stepped forward uh, to build the momentum in the business and create what it is that we have today. Uh, but the point of all this is that you may find yourselves where in a, in a time where it looks like you're gonna go bankrupt, there's no escape, there's no way out, and the greatest time in your life could just be around the corner. And that's what happened with my <laughs> Now, speaking about having a good life, uh, I wanna tell you something that happened on our 15 year anniversary cruise. Uh, it was a very special uh, event. It was incredible. We were uh, coming off of momentum 
for the uh, launch of X-39. People were excited. We had over 300 people on the cruise. So I was out and about taking pictures uh, with our brand partners as I normally would. And there, I ran into uh, Patty Zamora and her husband, Edgar. I'm looking over at Lorenzo in the group because Lorenzo is their leader. And, uh, and uh, Patty and Edgar said, hey, how about you know, we take a picture there together? And uh, Christina happened to be there. And she was there with her friend, Lizetta. So I said, ah, come on, let's all you know, take a picture together. So Christina was standing next to me and she had a shirt on that said, good vibes. She had a shirt on that said, good vibes. And I had a shirt on that said, life wave. So we're standing all next to one another. And a few weeks later, Patty and Edgar sent me this photo. And as I was standing next to Christina, the word vibes was covered by my shirt. And all you could see on her shirt was the word good. And on my shirt, Edgar had his hand over me and it was covering wave and all you could see was life. So when I looked at the picture, Christina and I were next to one another and it said good life. And uh, fortunately she had become available. And it was maybe about six months later um, that uh, we started, I started to court her. <laughs> and uh, lucky me, she was interested. And here we are today. Thank you, honey, I love you. It, it hasn't been a good life with her. It's been an amazing, great life. She's the love of my life, and I wouldn't trade her for the world. So what's going on with the future of LifeWave now? So I want to give you an example. That we're not interested in just being another network marketing company at this point that makes products and take them to market. In order for a project to qualify in our world now, it has to have a global impact. So I'll share with you an example so you can get a little bit of a taste for what's coming. A few years ago at one of our conferences, I shared a project uh, that I had worked on and a new technology that we had developed and this was something that we were evaluating. And keep in mind, at any one time, we may have 20 to 30 projects that are going on in our lab where we're investigating not just new products or new technologies, but we're investigating fundamental phenomena. And we want to understand how does the world around us work and what can we do uh, to develop products that are great for people and great for the planet. So one of these technologies and the uh, offer that I put out there at our conference was imagine a network marketing company where you got paid when garbage was being removed from a landfill and it was being processed and not generating any type of pollution. Imagine that type of business. And then imagine that what we're going to do is take that municipal solid waste, we're going to put it through this process, it's called, technically it's called pyrolysis, and you are um, degrading waste in the absence of oxygen, so you, the byproduct of that is heat and it's carbon. Now imagine that what we do is we take the heat that comes off of this reaction and we use it to create electricity and do it in such a way that it's incredibly efficient and there's no pollution going back into the environment. There's no radiation, no nuclear reactors, nothing like this. It's completely clean. It will do it 24 hours a day. We don't have to rely on wind. We don't have to rely on solar. And by the way, we take the carbon that's coming off and now we can sell it and we can pave roads with it. We can create shingles for homes. We can make building materials out of it. 
Imagine every time that you're signing someone up, you're getting paid when they're powering their home with electricity. You're getting paid when they're charging their electric car that we're being forced to drive. Um, and uh, we're taking pollution out of the environment and we're making the planet a better place to live in. That's the kind of network marketing <laughs> So this is, uh, this is the way that we're thinking about things. We're, we're still going to um, be producing products that fit into the health and wellness category. That is not going away. Um, in fact, we're only gonna be building on that. What I mean by that is the new technology that we're about to announce is opening up uh, an entirely new door in health and wellness. And uh, this is a technology that's exclusive to LifeWave and you'll be able to get benefits that you can't get with any other product. Uh, I should also mention that in the four studies that we've now completed, 100% uh, of the people that have uh, used this technology have gotten the results with it. Wow. It's the best that we've ever done with it. Uh, it's probably also worth mentioning that the average response time where we can actually measure a change in the body using this technology is about 15 seconds. Wow. So, and, um, and, um, this is, of course, before you start using X39 uh, with this product. So the two of them are going to work in harmony with one another, and that will all become uh, self-evident. So we want to continue to uh, build on what we're doing in health and wellness and uh, be the first company that develops these really viable solutions for extending lifespan, extending health span, and making aging a choice. We really want to get there first, and uh, of course, I believe we already have, uh, but now we just have to prove that. Uh, but that's that's the future that we're creating in, uh, in health and wellness. I'm gonna be, uh, as Meredith mentioned, a keynote speaker at the uh, DSN, and this is coming up in September, after our grand opening of our office in Utah. And uh, we've invested, as a statement to our commitment, we've invested millions of dollars, it's a huge sum of money, in developing this office uh, to be our new home. And this is an opportunity to make a statement about who we are as a company, uh, we have this state-of-the-art welcome center that I hope that you'll all get a chance to go to. We're having a VIP event there in uh, September and then another one in October. And um, this is an opportunity for our community to see that we are not just another network marketing company. We're something completely different. And this is an opportunity to see who LifeWave is and uh, how we're going to redefine the uh, network marketing industry. After the grand opening in September, I'm off uh, to be this keynote speaker. I've never done it before, so hopefully it'll go all right. Um, but Stuart Johnson, when he made the invitation, uh, I asked him, I said, what do you want me to talk about? And he said, well, they want to know all your secrets. <laughs> and I said, okay, I can do that. So uh, my, my message to the leaders of these other companies is that if you want to be successful like LifeWave, first you have to come really close to bankruptcy, lose everything you have, get into a cave, get to work, innovate, and, uh, and then you'll be fine. I just trust the process. It's all good. Well, okay. um, but, now, actually, uh, the message that I am going to share with them is that you know, we often think uh, in our industry 
that we have an adversarial relationship with other companies. We're competing for brand partners. And this is something uh, that really should change, where we should look at our community, regardless of the company, that we're brothers and sisters in this, and that network marketing is a bright light on a hill. It represents freedom it re in, in all manner. It represents freedom to choose what type of health that you want to have, what you put in your body. It's financial freedom. If you embrace that, it's in freedom to choose the path that you want to go in life. And we can't let the powers that be take that from our industry. So we need to stick together, we need to unify. And by LifeWave being an example of how we can innovate and create value techn valuable technology, valuable products, it makes the entire industry stronger. We attract more people to it and we change the way people think about networking, where now people say, I need to be a part of this industry because it's the best industry that there is. I'm gonna leave you with uh, maybe one or two final thoughts. Um, we've been working on a secret project. Well, actually more than one. Um, but we've been working on a secret project and that's something that we're going to unveil in October. I'm incredibly excited about it. There are many projects that you try and that you uh, work on over the years. And not all of them work out, but unless you uh, take the chance, you never really know. And it's so obvious that this one has been blessed because everything with it, all the right people have come together, everything has gone well and is heading in the right direction. And we're gonna unveil that in October and it is going to be an opportunity for millions of people that don't know who LifeWave is to find out about our company. So uh, when you come to the event in October, that's one of the many surprises that we have in store uh, that you're gonna get to see. I just wanna end with uh, thanking you all for being here today and for sharing in this mission that we have with LifeWave. Each of you have been responsible for making the world a better place and improving the quality of life for people all over the world. It, it was so great for Ryan to go through how many different countries are represented here today. And this means that our message is getting out there. People are having these wonderful healing experiences and they're seeing that there are choices. There's, we don't have to accept the narrative that we're given about healthcare, if you wanna call it that. And we don't have to accept that there is another way. We can turn towards natural solutions. We can turn towards the incredible array of healing products that are in this world that God created. We can use life to heal our bodies and have this independence. And all of you are ambassadors for that message. Every time that you're sharing that, it is having a compounding effect. And together we've built this incredible business uh, we're now, you know, we're selling over 20 million patches per year. I think it's going to be over 40 million patches this year that we've made. That's a lot of people that all of you have helped. So I give you my sincerest thanks and gratitude for sharing in this mission, for making the world a better place, for being a light on a hill, for sharing a message of hope, and for blessing the lives of others. Thank you so much for all those wonderful